All right, Gabe. We're back. Another day. Another, another double. double. Yep. <laughs> and a super rare one here. Steel String Singer number one. First one ever made. Yeah. It's and huge. Man, it's it's heavy. It sounds heavy. It sounds huge. The clean tone, as you just demonstrated, uh, a little something like Olivia, sounds absolutely amazing. And it should be named Speaker in this uh, currently is a JBL, which is is historically not a great speaker pick for uh, using overdriven sounds. Yeah. It really does sound great. It just seems to to be a perfect match. But before we get into some of those, maybe we just talk a little bit about sort of the history of the amp as we know it. So the original person that this was commissioned by was uh, a gentleman named Amos Garrett. Mm-hmm. And Amos, uh, you know, we've, we've listened to, to quite a bit of his music to kind of familiarize ourselves going into this. And he's a tele player primarily, yep. kind of does like pedal steel licks, kind of has like a chromaticism to what he's doing, wants kind of like a big, clean, kind of compressed sound. I could get why he would really connect with this. Yeah, I mean, bridge pickup, Telecaster it, yeah. is that sound. The current owner of this, however, has said that he did make some changes to the amp with Dumble. So mm-hmm. presumably it may be a little bit closer to a steel string singer than it originally was. Also, the original amp had an Altec speaker, yes. which uh, which the owner still has, but just preferred the sound of this JBL, which was installed by Dumble and revoiced, I suppose, with Dumble yeah. to sort of match that speaker pairing. I think we should also maybe touch on a little Stevie of just sort of pure clean. Yes. Uh, I think obviously the the most iconic example is Lenny. Yes. We'll go to position four on the Strat, neck in the middle, pure clean. I don't think I need to say anything else. It's a, it's a classic sound. Let's hear a little Lenny. That's good. I think that that was really fabulous. I think that I think where this amp really excels is just kind of the pure clean tone and just like the fatness is just it's it's really unparalleled by anything else that's out there. It's a really comfortable amp. Yeah, like we've played Dumbles in the past that were super in your face, a mm-hmm. lot of everything. This amp has similar characteristics, very in your face, punchy, but. It, kind of a bit easier to play. Yeah. I think one more cl- really clean uh, sound is warranted here in, in kind of in keeping with the Stevie vibe. And as we know, Stevie was a huge Hendrix fan yes. and uh, and covered many Hendrix songs. And although we're not going to do a, a voodoo child, <laughs> I think that uh, uh, Wait Until Tomorrow, uh, the, the Jimi Hendrix song, is mm-hmm. a really good example. And it's uh, the guitar is already in E flat, so it yeah. makes sense that we would maybe try a little bit, bit of that. I think that's a really good example of what you know a clean sound can do with a great strat. Maybe uh, you could play a little of uh, a Jimmy riff that maybe has a little uh, Stevie Ray yeah, inspiration. Yeah, a bit more right hand action as opposed to Lenny letting those chords ring out. Right. Let's do let's do a little of that. Get some double stops in there and uh, let, let the amp uh, speak the truth. Let's go.
I mean, I'm I'm in love. With, I would say almost that that sound to me, uh, as far as like a rhythm playing, that's pretty active and involved. It just sounds so great. So much great note separation, great yes. jangle and chime, just everything that you would want. Again, the percussiveness, the compression. It's just so amazing. So I think going to the sort of the next disciple, uh, <laughs> you know, for as far as it, as far as the steel string singer is concerned, I think it's most certainly John Mayer yes. uh, for our generation mm-hmm. of guitar player. And I, I want to go to some of those songs. I want to change guitars if we can yes. going to a, just an E standard strat. What would be a, a song you think would, would represent this amp? Well, for me waiting on the world to change. All right. And that's great because that'll give us some nice kind of like clean corn comping, kind yeah. of like what we were hearing in, 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 uh, wait till wait tomorrow. tomorrow. And so it kind of has something similar to wait to tomorrow, but it'll also give us some lead tones that we can add in that, that tube screen. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Let's hear a little of that. Great changes in terms of being able to hear it clean, getting to hear it dirty. I think that we could certainly go into other John Mayer songs. What oh, else yeah. do you think would be another one that would kind of exemplify what makes the Steel String Singer great? If we keep in that same album, we'll give you some belief. Belief. Now, that one's going to be a little hard to pull off because obviously the solo is the thing that most people yeah. really connect with. Uh, so maybe we'll lay down a little bit of a, of a backing mm-hmm. track, some layers there, and then come over with uh, the solo sound yeah. with the uh, tube screamer. Yes. All right. So, uh, Gabe, you're going to have your work cut out for you building this thing <laughs> oh, up. Yeah, let's do it. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it does. Let's go. Fantastic examples here. Uh, sounded great going to Steve Ray Vaughan, going to John Mayer. Mm-hmm. Two really important knobs that we haven't really touched on are the high and lows. And those are have detents in them. Mm-hmm. And it has a significant impact on the sound. So we can kind of understand, not only does this have the traditional, you know, sort of treble middle bass as a level knob, a master, and onboard reverb, mm-hmm. but it also has these sort of voicing controls as well that can be really, really cool. And then maybe we can also uh, involve the accent a little bit here and see what happens.
What would be interesting is if we were to ask Dumbo himself, is how a player would approach the amp setting it up wise. Mm-hmm. Would you do everything, EQ, reverb, and in this case, maybe tremor accent to your number one guitar and then adjust the filter knobs? Or would you turn the filters all the way up and then Back cut, them and off. Then yeah, cut yeah. frequencies? Yeah. I see, yeah. It'd be an, it'd be an interesting thing, and and uh, unfortunately not something that we can know yeah. from from the man himself. But I, I think just from us setting up tones before we got into the recording, it seemed like we kind of started with them in in, in the uh, opposition, uh, yeah, in the opposition, then kind of brought them mm-hmm. into taste. Yes, um, and, and I think the position that we settled on was low all the way off, and then uh, the highs up one yes. from from its yeah. lowest. Position. And that's where it became, I guess, the most even sound. And just kind of to name it, we've got you know it's on the rock position, and we do not we're not using the bright switch no. uh, at the moment. And then as far as the accent control, that really just seemed to increase the upper register, the yeah. kind of presence range. I think typically Dumble was referring to accent. The way that most people would refer to presence. Exactly. I mean, you take a uh, a video from 1080 to 4K. Yeah, it's a bit clearer. This is an absolute just piece of history. It's like you're sitting next to a Picasso here yeah. with, with this amplifier. It being the first one ever made, I think, just makes it all the more special. Um, and, and really, the the intent with you know really all these videos with with the Dumble amplifiers, whether it's this one or any number of other ones that we have, you can check out others of them in the description. We'll also have them embedded above. It's really about just paying homage to what makes these amps amazing and great. And like I said, this is sort of just a historical documentation of what makes each one of these unique. There is something special in every one of these. And so we're just so grateful for the opportunity. Many thanks to the owner of this amplifier. This amplifier is not for sale but it was just loaned to us for the purposes of creating this video and to just adding another rare and iconic amplifier to the catalog. Of course, having the very first one ever made, I think is just incredibly important and special. Yes. And if you enjoyed this video, if you're enjoying this whole series on Dumble amplifiers, uh, I highly recommend that you like and subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. I highly recommend that if you wanna support us and be able to help us continue to shoot these sorts of videos, Buying pedals from us is a great way to do it, as we are a pedal manufacturing (laughs) company first and foremost. And we happen to have a pedal called the Steel String Clean Drive that is based on the sound of this sort of amplifier. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out. We have a list of dealers over on our website, vertexeffects.com. We also have a Patreon that you can join if you're interested in having additional content like what you see here in the paid subscription. You can join Patreon for as little as $1 per month. So we try to keep it as affordable as possible. And then you know there's different tiers up from there. And another free way that you can continue to engage with us is through our podcast, Chairman of the Boards, where we do a roundtable discussion every single week with Brian O'Million from O'Million Audio and Grant Klassen from Goodwood Audio. And we talk about things like amplifiers, pedals, pedal boards, best practices, between three industry professionals. So please do check that out if you haven't already. And Gabe, any last things to say before we sign off for the day on the amp, the experience, anything you want to say? How can I get one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think uh, deep pockets helps. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe some luck as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, until next time, I am Mason Marangella from Vertex Effects, AKA The Rig Doctor and Gabriel Bergman, uh, the wonderful guitar player that has been uh, kind enough to follow me around as we get to engage with all these different great amplifiers. Thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.